people who want to bring down the kakistocracy called La Republic du Cameroon. I will be stern with my words. And I will be very honest with what I'm saying, addressing this message to Eric and Mark Barretta. Ever since we rolled out this campaign called TTOF, of course, there's been a huge traction. It has been the most transparent of all our financial dealings in this revolution. All. The most transparent. But before I even go into the TTF, let me explain who Tapang is. I was the president of the pastor's interim government. I was the president of the Ambazonia people. I was the president of the IG. I was the president of Skakuf. I was the president of Consortium at the onset of this revolution when no group existed. I, Tapang Ivo Tanku, I stand here and I pledge that I was the president of the Ambazonia people through the Cameroon Anglophone Civil Society Consortium. And you all know that Tapang Ivo was the president. I did everything in my powers, everything, literally everything. At that time, I was a poor student, very poor, wretched. So poor, they call me pizza boy, no problem. I was going to school, delivering my pizza, no problem. I didn't, I didn't even get motors, I need to drive. I didn't go pick pizza, come, can't deliver them just to meet, just to make ends meet. But I was on a scholarship, but I was doing my own, my own things. Ambazonians, listen, I did everything possible in this revolution to work with Mark Barretta to roll out the biggest form of unity the revolution never, ever, and has never, ever had. Void of politics. A youth-led revolution. I worked completely with every single leader. I have never, ever met Ayaba Cho Lucas before. I have never, ever met Bo Herbert before. I had never, ever met any of these leaders. I was just a regular journalist who came from Cameroon on a scholarship to the United States doing something else. And I was focused on my goal. At the same time, the revolution slapped me in the face. I had to welcome it. I take the consortium as the president. I should not for inside the consortium. I do my own job. Before politicians, they come, can't push out government upon government. But at the time of that consortium, I stand as the testimony to say the first person and the only person who has ever gone down to ground zero. Permit me to take this off my screen. The only person who has ever gone down to ground zero to build a militia, to build an armed force, to build, to gather soldiers, not sitting from abroad. The first person, even before Sisiku Ayoktabi, I am speaking as the president was during my era that I recorded all of these. It was Ayabacho Lucas, Dr. Ayabacho Lucas. We all watched the videos. I criticized that particular video because at that time, I did not think we were so quick to transition into an arms conflict with La Republic du Cameroon because we were ill-prepared. But Ayaba already nursed this idea, had the plan, and was not working alone. He was working with a team of people including Sheikh Kavi Womilim, including uh, Benedict Kwa, and a couple of people who are also advisors within and under the structure known as the Ambazonia Defense Forces, not even AGOFC. When Ayabacho went down to that, to that village, the village of Asu Lucas, he created, erected this huge force. General Ivo of Blessed Memory, was the first and the first general trained who had direct communications eyeball to eyeball with Dr. Ayabacho Lucas on ground zero, not in Nigeria, on ground zero. They made everything possible. At that time, some of us were still federalists. Listen, and listen keenly. I'm addressing this issue, tracing the roots of the defense forces and their fundraising back to 2016 or 2017. Long before Eric Tato started talking about maybe the revolution in the first place. Long before Tapang and, and Mark started thinking about vipers in the first place. These guys were already talking about guns. And guns is a project that never ends until it achieves its purpose. Listen, Ambazonians make an open eye here. 
that was back in 2016, back in 2017, the first death against La Republic du Cameroon ever recorded in this revolution happened in February 2017 when Dr. Ayabacho Lucas claimed credit for killing gendarmes, for killing people. I think somewhere in 2017, came for killing gendarmes, those terrorists who came to kill Ambazonians. Dr. Ayabacho Lucas openly confessed that I did it. And it is on Reuters News Agency. Go Google it. And what was the reaction? The first person will come back. Can't talk, say, no, no, no be with one. No be with one. No, 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 we need to kill La Republic. It was the person who is in jail right now. Sisiku Ayotabi, who opened, who gave it an open apology. That no, Ayabacho Lucas, uh, we don't do this. We don't kill La Republic. Ayaba say, I kill them and I will kill them. That is the first person who opens the eyes of all Cameroonians and the eyes of all Amazonians. People started thinking self-defense was a plausible and possible solution on the table of independence. But yet people were resistant because it was a new revolution. And people were, okay, how do we get the guns? Like we are still using Dane guns. How do we get the guns? But listen, Amazonians, when Ayabacho Lucas pointed out this as the alternative solution to you forming a government, no one believed. Ivo had been crying and talking. Even Ayabacho said, we're going to join government. And I've been always there against government. Always from day one till today. I have always stood against it because we are still in a liberation phase. I've always, everybody knows me as the founder against government. And everyone can testify. Years later, I might just fast forward up. We had Mark Barretta, we had Tapang Ivo. I was dismissed as the consortium leader in some political charade. But what, what do I gain from that? I spend more money for the consortium past the way I, I, even, I even get money from as a student under Fulbright scholarship. I spend so much of my personal income on the consortium. Mark and I, we did not raise up to $15,000, but our strategies brought down the Republic du Cameroon. Hint, here is a hint. It is not the amount of money that you raise that can bring down La Republic. No, it is your strategy and strategic thinking that brings down La Republic to Cameroon. Second hint, it is not the total population that will come to you for you to bring down La Republic. No, you need just two, three people who think alike to bring down La Republic to Cameroon. Jesus Christ used 12 unknown citizens of the world to conquer the entire world. I don't need a crowd to bring down La Republic. I need just two, three, four strategic minds to bring down La Republic. And if you are still thinking in numbers, believe me, numbers is not power. China today has a quarter of the world's population. But yet, it is not ranked anywhere closer to the world's strongest power, Russia and the United States. Not, not ranked anywhere, but they have the population. And China is one of the countries with the biggest form of unity because they have what they call the CPP, the Chinese Communist Party. And it's a centralized system of government where information cannot be leaked out and information is highly and heavily censored. Yet, they are still not the strongest power in the world. Unity in numbers does not matter. You don't need millions of people to make you strong. Just having two people who are dedicated to a cause can bring down an elephant. Having a flock of sheep does not mean that elephant will come down. Having just one hunter who knows where to shoot at the elephant can bring down that particular elephant. Ambazonians, listen. It came to the point when I was dismissed as the consortium leader. I am addressing this message to Eric and Mark. No insult included. We are talking. And I want them to retort. It came to the point when I, Tapang Ivo, resigned. I stayed solo, working as a one-man commando. But will that pay? No. Why will it not pay? Because working as a one-man commando to defeat La Republic du Cameroon, you need guns. I could as well use, and I can still as well right now, use my popularity and influence to raise money to bring down La Republic du Cameroon with guns. But believe me, if I do that, I'm, I'm creating a, a, a perfect condition 
for chaos on ground zero. It's the perfect condition I'm creating. I humbled myself. Tapang I away to say, oh, you're not humble, you're not humble. The most humble activist in this revolution. I don't, I'm not bragging. It's me, Tapang Ivo. I came down from my own high horse as the consortium president to work under Ayaba, who has been heavily criticized, vilified, and demonized by people whom you now curse as the origin of division on Ground Zero called my trip to Boya. All of you. My trip to Boya surrogates, whether you are still with them or you are against like Eric Tato and Mark Beretta, you guys all thought I did the wrong thing to join Ayabacho Lucas. And you guys all shunned me, insulted all of this nonsense. I don't mind. That's fine. It's part of the revolutionary game. Now everyone's eyes have opened because the internal enablers of my trip to Boya are now speaking against the my trip to Boya. So their eyes have been opened. Millions of people have moved over to joining Tapang Ivo, the Ego of Sea, and the rest. We have welcomed them. Here is the point. Mark has tried out certain groups or whatever, the Dark Project, the NAC Project, all NAC, NAC, or whatever. I don't have a problem with that. It has never worked. Why does it not work? You don't wake up one morning. You've been calling yourself a journalist with National Telegraph. You've been calling yourself an activist. You call yourself a humanitarian donor with Aya Foundation. You call yourself a this one with this one. Then suddenly you become a defense force strategist. I don't get it. I don't get it. I have never ever claimed to be a journalist in this revolution. Never. But I have a career as a journalist. I kept my career as a journalist before entering this revolution because I, what I do is propaganda. And I've always been consistent on that. You all put me on record. Trace all my videos, I have said this publicly that I do propaganda against my enemy. I have always said it. I have never said I'm doing journalism. Because what I do is heavily biased against my enemy. It's to bring down my enemy. And I have always been consistent on this. That I do propaganda against my enemy. Not against my people. Against my enemy. And if the propaganda works... Have we not succeeded? We have succeeded. The people who claim to do journalism, having journalism blocks like the Barretta News, which means it's a journalism block, you are a journalist. Having journalism blocks like National Telegraph, which means you are a journalist. You are, I mean, like literally, you are a journalist. You have to respect balance, objectivity, accuracy. You have to respect all of those. Then suddenly, without shrugging off the cloak, of journalism, you transition to become a defense expert, still keeping the same cloak of journalism. How does it work? I mean, like, present it to the people. Who are you in the first place? An activist? A journalist? A defense expert? Humanitarian donor? A social media blogger? Who, who are you in the first place? I mean, like, just give me your identity. If Ban Ki-moon or whoever Guterres comes up to say, hey, Mark Tato, uh, we are holding this conference, we're inviting journalists. Will you show up? You show up as a journalist. A journalist who kills people on ground zero? Or let's say you kill the enemy. So are you a journalist? Or a journalist who raises funds in the name of guns to kill people or to kill the enemy? When I say people, is the La Republic to Cameroon. Are you a journalist? No, just give me, give me something logical. For me to use and describe you. We are discussing. I have not insulted anyone. This is an intellectual and honest discussion. An open discussion. That is why I am standing up. Permit me to be loose. Ambazonians, listen. The people who are dragging you towards the ditch. The pitfall. Are the people whom you look up to. Not the people whom you are looking up against. And listen very keenly. You cannot be a journalist, a publisher of National Telegraph, a publisher of Barretta News, a Facebook blogger of National Telegraph, 